What's up, hybrids? Welcome back to the Phantom Hybrid Podcast. This is Hanako, and I am here with Anthony and Mike. And we are discussing the series finale of Hawkeye. I don't know. I kind of felt like they left that a little... I felt like they left that a little open for maybe another season, but we'll go with... They definitely definitely left it open for for Katie to come back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they probably will. There'll be another series called Hawkeye, and it'll be Kate Bishop. Better Hawkeye than what was the other one? She said Hawk Eve. Lady Hawk. Hawk Eve. <laughs> Lady Hawk. And I immediately already... thought of the movie Lady Hawk. I know. I was like, what? You're, you don't look anything like Rucker Hauer. What's wrong with that? <laughs> okay. Oh my God. So there are two things I want to start out talking about this episode with. The first one is <clears throat> Anthony. I need to go on ahead and, and 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 let you get this out about my girl Yelena and go her ahead. needing to find out go some ahead. answers right. about her sister. Go ahead. Say it again. You were right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I just feel like no one ever does that for me when I'm right about something. I never well, hear that. We do. You know, you, you, wait, just, I'm sorry. You can only be right if you put forth put forth a theory. If you put forth a theory and your theory is confirmed, then you can be right. But yeah. since you don't do theories, you do suppositions and what ifs, <laughs> then there's no, I mean, I'm not sure what you want, what you want to do here. He's got a point. You know, but we, we do acknowledge <laughs> when you're right, but Whatever. you just. You, we give you, you get credit where credit is due. You just okay, don't well, say, you don't glee about, like no, about it like we do. No, exactly. That's yeah. what it is. So Master gloaters. <laughs> Yes, and proud of it. (laughs) The other thing that I want to start off talking about, this is obviously not going in order. We got to talk about that (laughs) ingress. Now, you know what I'm going to say, right? Someone actually took the time out to write that stupid shit, choreograph that stupid shit, and put that stupid shit on stage. Yep. Enough said. (laughs) I'm done. That was was hilarious. No disrespect to the people who worked really hard on it. I'm sure they worked really, really hard. They put a lot of effort into it, a lot of work, a lot of hours. But right, shout out to Mark Shane, Mark Shaman. But you know, I could have done without it. It was like you couldn't have. Yeah, I could have. (laughs) Yeah, I could have. It was like a good four minutes. Yeah, that's six minutes that I will never get back (laughs) ever. But hey, it was fun. You can, you can say that you experienced it. Experience is all that it's about. It was fun. It was awesome. I didn't think they were going to give us the whole number, though. When I'm sitting, I mean, I was watching it. So I actually stayed up last night so that I could watch it as soon as it came out. And I was sitting there sleepy, but I was dying. It was so funny. And I was like, oh my God, are they really giving us the whole song? And it was one of those, it, it was cringe worthy, yes, but it was still, it was awesome still. I don't I know. Just, if I, I, would, a, I don't know if I would sit through a whole two hour show of no, that. I can't. No. I'm not doing that. No. I was trying, I was trying to figure out if that if the black doctor guy was Cisco or if if that was like if that was what's his name. Um. Uh, what's his name? Starts with name starts with a T. Todrick or the I, I was like, is that Todrick or oh, Cisco? Todrick Hall. No, it wasn't. I know it wasn't. I'm just saying. He had, he had like the silver hair, like Cisco. Mm-hmm. I was like, is he erasing the thong song? No, Todrick went to. I've just got to get up, get up, get up. Is that the Todrick he's talking about? Uh, he's Todrick. he. Well, he's yeah. He's talking about Todrick Hall. Yeah, the one who. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the one who. Uh, y'all students went to go see perform yes yeah yeah that that would be so, interesting i kept looking at him though like i was like who is he supposed to be portraying because i i couldn't figure it out at four o'clock in the morning i was like who are they and it was nobody okay Just some doctor on the street okay. maybe he's dr strange no he was not <laughs> and all i kept thinking was what what um what clint said in the first episode uh, Ant Man wasn't even there. <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't fly. Like he, <laughs> he doesn't he, fly. <laughs> so Ant Man flies in. Like no, he doesn't. 
he flies like ugh. but he wasn't even there <laughs> right but you know that's also kind of like what we what we've been discussing the last couple of episodes like do people really know the scope of what happens with the avengers like i think they don't you know they just kind of assume some things like think about it when you're talking about the fights that they've had um i don't think ant-man has ever been like i know that they had some security fit footage from the uh civil war fight and if you look at it he kind of looks like he's flying so i don't know maybe maybe someone took that security footage and that's you know that's how they portrayed like oh they have this new superhero that shrinks and he enlarges himself and he's flying around maybe it's just like that you know just kind of kind of the same way that you know we've been talking about no one really knows about Natasha's sacrifice because Clint's not going to go around and just talk about it to just random people so people are just going to make their own assumptions which you know Yelena did mm-hmm. but she she had to find out the truth about what her sister did and uh I actually liked that scene it was uh very heartfelt you know one of the things that I know people complain about is the fact that Clint and Natasha's friendship is always referenced and we always see a lot of Clint's background or Clint's information or we see more of Clint's story than we ever did of Natasha so it's kind of like I know a lot of people were wondering if that was like a one-sided friendship like was Natasha the person who was always there for Clint and then didn't share anything about herself with Clint and I never felt that I just felt like for whatever reason they just never showed it to us in that sense so for him and Yelena to actually have that conversation um just like with last week when Kate told him that Natasha's sister was there and he knew who it was he was like oh Yelena and then when he sees her this week and they had that conversation you know of course she's trying to beat him to a pulp because even when he told her your sister sacrificed herself she thought he was lying so she was she was ready to kill him And then he does the little whistle callback that she and Natasha did. And they have that conversation. And he was like, she talked about you all the time. She loved you. And all of, you know, all of this emotional stuff showing that, yeah, they actually had a two-sided friendship. Like she shared as much with him as she did, as he did with her. And I think it also goes back. We had a conversation. um, I don't remember if it was with this show or if we were talking about Black Widow when Clint came back and she died and they were all sitting out there on the dock and asked the question do we know if she had any family and Clint never said anything I felt like I think I mentioned it back then I felt like he didn't say anything because Natasha never shared that information with the rest of the group so he felt like maybe it wasn't his place to do so you know but he was aware of her he knew how close they were he knew how much Natasha loved her and um i think that scene was really well done just with the emotional weight of it you know both of them are people who love this character who love this person and yeah i mean looking from yelena's point of view i would be upset too it's like okay so my sister is gone i didn't get a chance to spend as much time with her as you did and then you were there when she died like whatever sacrifice Natasha made or whatever closure you know she probably wants to have or needs to have she can't do that but Clint in some ways had closure because he was there you know he may be still dealing with the after effects but at least he doesn't have anything to wonder his mind like oh what happened to her is this what really happened you know, was she in pain? This and like he knows everything about that, and Yelena didn't. And I think she just needed to know that in order to have maybe not peace, but some type of understanding so that she could kind of let that go. Yeah, but Plus I, also, got- I also need Yelena to understand that she was gone for five years. Yeah. 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 I mean, getting, getting snapped is kind of a thing where it's like she didn't even, even if she wanted to, she couldn't really. Get in touch, get in touch with her, or check up on her, or you know, just say, "Hey, fuck you, what are you doing?" 
okay cool yeah you know but also to think about it for us we know it was five years but for her it was just a split second yeah, it was instantaneous so it's one of those things where it's like in theory she knows she was gone for five years but having experienced what she experienced and we got to see exactly what it was like from her point of view that might still be hard for her to to come to grips with like I was gone for a whole five years you know she had to she had to mourn me she had to make her peace with the fact that I was gone but I was only gone for a few seconds that that's probably still taking some time for her to wrap her brain around and and I also wanted Clint to say that she sacrificed herself to bring you back I, I really wanted that in there too I wanted him to say that I did too because I felt like I felt like it needed to be said even if at the time that we saw it we didn't know that that was her motivation right. but with everything we saw with Black Widow and just how close they were and everything that she went through in order to reunite with Yelena I felt like they should have put that line in there just to give us a if not if anything just to appease the people who are like oh Natasha uh sacrificed herself for Clint you know people have that issue of oh yeah here we are the main female character sacrifices herself for a male character so that he can you know to advance his story arc yeah I think that line would have gone a long way in changing the perception of Nat sacrifice. Yeah, I think that was a, a missed opportunity by the writers there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, but it's they- but but oh. th- I mean that doesn't change the fact that it was like the way that they choreographed the fight scene and the way that you know they delivered their lines. It's like, you know, I mean, yeah, like yeah, give it to Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh is is a way better actress than most people give her credit for because she really sold the fact that she was just like devastated by everything that happened and her not being able to say goodbye to Nat. Mm -hmm. And she really didn't, she didn't, you could tell that she didn't want to believe Clint, but somewhere deep inside her heart, she knew that he was right, but she just didn't want to, she didn't want to believe it because if she believes it, then it's like, there's really there's nothing to be mad at I think she needs that anger to have to express her grief because she doesn't really know how to express grief other than the only other thing she knows is like anger so yeah. it's like she, she just doesn't have a, right and if there's no one to blame she doesn't have a there she doesn't have an outlet so she's stuck in that, that stage of grief in the five stages of grief she's stuck in anger yeah yeah and she couldn't see past her age just like maya maya couldn't see past her age and once again marvel gives us two characters with the same emotional feeling and we see how that that drives them Mm -hmm. i'm starting to i'm starting to that's her anger either yeah i'm starting to think that if in order to write a marvel tv series you have to have a master's degree in psychology so that you can like effectively execute every everybody's emotions in it because they do a really good job in all the series so far of of showing certain uh, certain um emotions like especially grief and depression and like acceptance and how to get around it like they really do a good job without actually being licensed psychologists. Yeah, I mean, they make they make you feel it all. Yeah. So, and, and not only that, even the characters that are flawed or the characters that we would look at as, you know, bad guys or villains, they have a way of showing us their viewpoint to where we can look at it and say, okay, I don't agree with it but I understand it like the whole Thanos thing like I understand what he was saying as far as you know the world or the universe is overpopulated it's draining all the resources and at that point you know eventually we would cease to exist because you know you can't sustain that kind of you can't sustain what we are doing i mean even here on planet earth like the planet is dying 
you know, because we are tapping into all of the resources from it. If aliens ever do invade us, they're going to be like, Psh, they done already used it up. Let's move on to the next one. But Earth is so know, ghetto. Get we old. We made a wrong turn. This is the ghetto. <laughs> but you know, they they make they they do a good job of getting us to understand those other viewpoints. Even if we don't agree with them, we do understand or we can at least see some logic in you know whatever the mindset but yeah um keeping up with the yelena thing okay so i do need a show with yelena and kate i just immediately I, it needs to happen immediately it needs to happen the they have so of, much chemistry oh my god awesome. <laughs> and speaking of choreography mike brought that their fight scene um, the way it was yet and get a yet another one shot in this series, another one right. one shot scene. And you know they had to build that set, each mm-hmm. one of those rooms, and um, you know, and film it like that. Yeah. That was really good. It was. It was that- kind. It was kind. It was kind of like an outside version of like the Daredevil hallway scene. Like mm-hmm. instead, like instead of showing them in the hallway, they show like them going through it, and you on the outside of it, kind of seeing it go past you. And that was crazy. Shout out to the guy, the random guy working late. And while everyone else is partying, he's like, whoa, what? He's looking like, but the <laughs> fact is, he was just so cool about it because here comes two women. They are crashing through your office. They're tearing up desks. They're throwing stuff and they're just throwing each other around. He's just sitting there like, what the hell is going on? What? Who are these? I mean, he was so calm <laughs> about it. But I got to get these reports crazy. done. Keep it down. But their chemistry is really good. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like yeah. at the end when, when Kate says, "Stop making me like you." Right. Because <laughs> like, I'm sorry. It. It's I what mean, I do. They're sitting there fighting each other. They're both smiling and cracking jokes. And you know, when when they first got in the elevator and Kate, Kate kept trying to mess with the elevator buttons, and Yelena would hit her hand. I was like, "That was Why hilarious." Like this is mother and child. Like. Yelena is the mommy and Kate is the child that just can't keep her hands to herself and always touches stuff that she's not supposed to touch. And Yelena's just sitting there popping her. And Kate's like, ow. I mean, okay, let's be it's honest. It's like Yelena, Yelena was just standing there looking straight ahead, looking exasperated. Like if she doesn't quit touching the, trying to touch those damn buttons. Yelena she says, so like don't she do that. Did she seemed like she was more of a mother to Kate than Eleanor was. So that's so annoying. And then when she oh. actually sat there and like got all of the buttons for the elevator, I was like, oh, this is about to be a long night. She's going to beat her ass just, just out of frustration. <laughs> like, hey, shout out to Kate Bishop for going toe-to-toe with the Black Widow. Right, right. No, shout out to Kate Bishop for like when, when we discuss her going toe-to-toe with Kingpin later. Like she is like, she is well, for real. Like to, to be fair, to be fair, Kingpin was not trying to hurt her. He was tossing her away, like get out of my way. If he, if you, you've seen him fight there, you've seen him fight. If he wanted to do some damage to her, he could have, he could have yeah. hurt her pretty good. But that, that's yeah. like at the end when he was like, okay, now I'm getting annoyed. She should have been worried. But she was like, yeah. okay, whatever I have to do. I mean, she was doing all of that to protect her mother, yeah. you know, which, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see, even though she found out her mom was a criminal, she found out the depths to which her mother, you know, sunk or whatever, and the reasonings, which, okay, Anthony, you know, sorry, she didn't kill her husband, at least mm. not from what I gathered. Mm. But mm. Um, yeah. it did she take didn't, her- She didn't deny it. There was no denial. Well, you know, the way she, the way that she said it, she said when, um, she said after what happened with your father, I was devastated, you know, basically because he left. I mean, the whole reason why they were fighting in the first place was because he had borrowed money from Kingpin. He owed money. He was in debt and, you know, him dying basically placed that, that burden on her and she didn't know what to do, you know, um, but she wouldn't her, have told she wouldn't have told Kate that she killed him either. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't, I, I don't know. And and I can see and Illinois is very uh 
I don't want to use the word um, impulsive, but she seems like she can make some pretty harsh decisions. And if it, for a moment, yeah, she if for a moment, if she thought about, oh, I need to kill this. If she got mad, I can see her just killing him because she was mad and be like, oh, I fucked up. Right. That's yeah. true. So, yeah, I, um, I don't know. I just didn't get the feeling that Kate, I mean, not Kate, that Eleanor actually killed her husband. I feel like from the way she was explaining it, her husband got himself into debt with the kingpin. Then he got himself killed, you know, because of Loki and the aliens and the Chitari. And then after he died, of course, Kingpin, from the way she described it, he owed a massive amount of money. Kingpin ain't going to let that just slide. You know what I'm saying? So she had ended up having to take on his debt. And I think that was probably the start of her being the person that she is today, as far as like the securities company and her being successful, her still being this multimillionaire or whatever you know, the case, I think that probably came out of necessity. She's like, okay, my husband is gone. I have incurred his debt. I have to figure out a way to, you know, make this work so that it doesn't affect Kate. And I mean, we, we hear her kind of admit that as well while they're having a conversation. And in a lot of ways, I did feel sorry for her because if you think about it on a much lower scale, I mean, None of us are multimillionaires, but being a single mother, having to, you know, do things or take on responsibilities in order to take care of your children without your children having to know like the hard things that you have to do in order to take care of them. I sympathize with her, you know, in that aspect. Like I can understand she might have been in a position where she was like, okay, I have to do whatever it takes to take care of my child and to make sure she wants for nothing. And she even, she even says that she says something about, um, I grew, I I know what it's like to have nothing. You would not survive that. But I also feel like Kate probably wouldn't have survived it because that's how you raised her. Like you raised her in this big penthouse, you know, um, raised her to have the best of everything like how is she supposed to know any different right raise her raise her to shrug off shrug off her destroying it destroying a clock tower and just shrugging it off and taking her credit card like okay what you expect right right but um i mean i won't say that eleanor doesn't love her daughter it's obvious that she does i just think she went about it the wrong way you know, when we first are introduced to her character at the beginning of the series, she's the one who's actually talking to her husband, like, okay, we have to give up the penthouse. We have to change the way we live. Like she was the one who was probably on the end of, we don't have to have all of this, you know, let's just figure it out, get somewhere safe. We can still be a family. We can still raise Kate in a good way. It just doesn't have to be all of this. And her dad was the one who was like, no, we're keeping the penthouse. I'll figure something out. And then I feel like as she took on his burden, she also kind of took on that mindset like, okay, no, I'm going to give my child the best of everything. This is what I've done. Like she, I guess she at some point did pay off her debt or she was still working on paying off that debt. But no, she says she paid it back tenfold. Right. Yeah, she did. And then Kingpin even said to her, you seem to have done quite well for yourself as well. You know, while you're paying me back, you obviously made enough to make yourself well off. And maybe she just got comfortable and she was like, oh, okay, I'm keeping this lifestyle. You know, when it comes to getting your hands dirty, sometimes the more you do it, the less it bothers you until, like she said, Kate started finding out. And now once her daughter is finding stuff out, she's like, oh, okay, I got to stop. Because I think she knew that was going to affect the way that Kate looked at her, which it did. I mean, Kate still loves her mother, but she was also, she was also like, um, yeah, 911, I know who murdered Armand Duquesne. You need to come and get my mother. I, right. That was a twist I actually wasn't expecting, you know, that 
Eleanor would actually get arrested and you know she knew Kate was the one who turned her in and Kate was like yeah I love you see you in a few years you know it was kind of ironic she was talking about taking responsibility for your actions like right as the cops are pulling up things you do (laughs) oh really well how do you like that consequence about that yeah I thought that too when I was watching it I said, oh, okay, so we're about to see if you're going to put your money where your mouth is. Like, they're here to arrest you. But um, I'm trying to think. There was some. There I was mean, some you literally things. murdered somebody. And, and really. Oh, yeah. and look, that was the thing. I think, I think, who was it? Was it you or was it Lori that actually said that she probably murdered Armand? Because I remember making a comment about, I don't know if I believe that Eleanor would murder him in her evening gown. I remember saying that. Yeah, and, and I said that. Okay. I also said she murdered her husband. Why wouldn't she murder Armand? Okay, yeah. So you, you were right about the Armand thing. Um, that, that, was, that, that wasn't a stretch, though. <laughs> I, I, yeah, but you know, for a while, I, I really did think that maybe Jack had done it. Oh, speaking of speaking yeah. of Jack... Mike, were you happy when he started pulling out the sword and started whooping some Finally, up? I'm like, damn, dude, can you be a swordsman for a second? Like just for a second. Yeah. Okay, but first off, can we talk, can we talk about him him making the party and wearing a and wearing a freaking saber <laughs> with his suit? Like walking into the party with a saber, like really? I mean, Clint like, okay. even said it. He was like, So you come to the party <laughs> wearing a sword after you just got out of police custody where you were suspected of killing somebody with a sword with the sword like, right i guess that's a flex okay <laughs> it was like okay yeah. i guess that's one of those ways to say okay yeah i'm not scared of you yes yeah y'all think i killed my uncle i'm gonna come here and i got so oh the conversation he had with our what was it armand the fourth, armand seven the seventh seven. one that conversation was funny because that little boy. See, I'm going to get your wine collection. <laughs> he was like, Jack was like, you aren't even old enough to drink it. He was like, I will be by the time you get out of jail. Well, it, it will have peaked by then. Then he, right. then he goes into, you remember that? You remember that party where you peed your clothes? I remember it. Everybody remembers Everybody it. I was remembers like, that it. was so me. <laughs> like, you're so petty. Like, what the hell, dude? <laughs> And then when Grills was carrying him off later, he's like, put me down. Do you know who I am? I'm trying to save your I'm trying to save your spoiled ass. (laughs) So since you you brought up Grills. That scene was so random, though. Him That conversation with Armand the Seventh, that was just so random. You know, I... I, I don't know. I guess maybe because even when we first saw Armand the Seventh in that first episode, I was like, "Why are they showing us this spoiled, bratty little kid?" Like it was obvious from the way that he was speaking to Kate at that point. You know, um, his grand what was it, grandfather, great grandfather. He was like, "Oh, you come over here. You remember Miss Bishop?" And he's looking at her like, "Do I have to speak to her?" You know, he had that kind of attitude. So right. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe the spoiled brat will show up somewhere else later on, and he's just comic relief or something. I don't know. But since you mentioned grills, this is probably how my thought process is going to go. Get down, Patfoot. This is probably how my thought process is going to go because you guys keep mentioning people and then I'm thinking about how <laughs> awesome they were in the show. So that's probably the, the trajectory our discussion is going to take. Let's talk about grills and the, and the LARPers <laughs> because when right. they came out in their costumes, it's like they were there undercover as servers at the party and like the coat check guy, you know, to kind of help Clint and Kate, you know, get a handle on things. And then once things get out of control and they're trying to, you know, direct all the people out, people aren't paying attention to them. And, you know, the, the cop lady, she was like, these people don't know how to follow directions, but oh, put them in some costumes that make them look like they might be superheroes and everybody is paying attention. I hollered. I really want, <laughs> I really want to hear Lori's take on that. And Lori is actually not on the show um, tonight because she did experience a loss in her family. So our thoughts are with her. Um, we will try to get her thoughts on the whole episode. But I yeah, shout out to the LARP Avengers. That's all, that's what start calling them the LARP Avengers. You know what? When I saw them come out, 
I literally could hear Lori shrieking in my head about these LARPers and I could not stop laughing yeah. while I was watching yeah. this episode. But see, what, what was funny was about the people not following the directions. I told the person I live with whom I related to by marriage, like, are they just running around screaming in circles? And yes, of like, course they are. Yeah, they're rich people. They don't know what to do. Right. And they don't, they're, they're not going to listen to the help. I mean, because exactly. the, the two you people are just running around in circles, right? And Please. and even one of the um the the white lady, I can't remember her name, but when they were trying to direct them on the elevators, she was like, please, you know, please get on this the is, elevator in an orderly fashion. That, and they kept on. She was like, well, I was she Wendy? I thought it was Missy. It might be Missy. Yeah, it might be Missy. You you might be right, but. She was trying to direct them on the elevators, you know, in an orderly fashion. They're just running, screaming. She was like, or oh, I guess you guys can just run and scream and not pay attention. <laughs> I mean, they were over it. They were yeah, when, over yeah, it. Missy, Missy was the white girl. Wendy was the black girl. Okay. Okay. And Orville was the big guy. Okay. But no. she was over it. She was like, you know what? I'm trying to get y'all out of this building safely without getting shot. Y'all don't want to listen. That's on y'all. I'm going to get my cost. <laughs> like, well, shout out to them for being like an awesome support team. Yeah. Like he really need needed that support team. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. They were awesome. And, and shout out for shout out for shout out to Grills for not getting killed and killed in this in this season because he did get killed in the um comic book. So shout oh, out to okay. him for okay. Yeah, so shout out to him for making it through the whole season. Unscathed, he gets killed. Wendy becomes a bad guy who tries to hunt down Clint. So <laughs> all that's coming. That's part of season. the multiverse. <laughs> that's gonna be exactly. part of the multiverse. <laughs> yeah, but, this isn't that multi this isn't that multiverse. No, it's not. But uh let's give a shout oh, out. Because Wendy to... wants her bag back. I don't oh, know if Wendy course. got her bag back. Of course. Yeah, her bombshell bag. Yes. But um let's let's give a shout out to Missy for those awesome uh Hawkeye uniforms because Clint oh, yeah. actually wore his. <laughs> I was like, okay. And, and he was it was it him? He was saying, Oh yeah, this 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 uh material is really good or something. Yeah, he was was saying yeah. That at the end. Yeah. 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 So the 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 outfit looked good. It did look good. It's a lot of purple, yeah. and I'm not used to, I'm I'm used to seeing him in a lot of darker colors as mm. far as not anything like that. Purple was dark, but it was also bright. <laughs> So, it was a shout out to the comic book. Yeah, costume. I know, I know, but it's weird because I'm not used to seeing him in in any kind of bright colors like that. But uh, the suit looked good. At least he didn't have the pointy masquerade mask with the H in the middle. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not yet, at least. Not in this multiverse. No, no, not in this <laughs> universe. Yeah, that'll be part of the multiverse. But the uh, costumes look good. Getting to see him make his trick arrows that was fun okay can we talk about how conceited tony stark is that he has to put stark on everything that he makes it's branding it was he made by the brand <laughs> exactly they were made by stark industries i mean it's not like everything. it's not like if he would have got him i mean hank pym's the same way all his arrows had pym on them so it's like you gotta know you gotta let people know who's Who's running this thing? They, it was probably, you know what? I bet in my in my head, I have a head cannon where Hawkeye said, "I need arrows," and both Hank Pym and Tony were like, "Cool, no problem." And they were like, "Oh, really? Let's have a contest." So they each had they had a contest making trick arrows to see which arrows which arrows would actually be the best. I actually thought that when I saw that scene where he opened up the box of Stark, Stark arrows, yeah. and then there yeah. was just still the the one Pym arrow. I say, yeah, they probably had a contest. Like, who can make the better trick arrow? I mm -hmm. bet the chemical ones were Pim, and the explosive projectile and electrical ones, ones were Stark. Tony. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, equally I, as a I was trying to think that. Okay, when we get to the arrows, I have a question, but that's no. Right. Go ahead. I told you this. Look, we're talking about the arrows. Go ahead, shoot. No what's pun intended. Thing, so, what's the thing they call that they that, that she used to to label them? Oh, oh yeah, the, the dimo, 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 <laughs> the dimo <laughs> label maker. It was awesome. And Very that was an old school one. Sure. The one with the circle. 
Yeah, it was the old school one because the ones they have now are actually like they're they're just regular electronic. It's like it's like a little touchpad it and it, it prints it out. out. So yeah, that's yeah, that like that's like fun. one from like fifth grade and stuff. I'm like, damn, I haven't seen one right. of those. And she said, "What's this arrow?" He said, "Uh, that one's too dangerous." Two T O O space D. Oh man, but yeah, um, when there was one arrow in in. But the way it act, the, the one with the little circle like electrical field that when they shot it it went around the guy and held him like this and he fell uh-huh. down mm-hmm. that looked really familiar and i can't figure out where i saw I it i couldn't from. place it either it did look familiar it, looks, it did uh, you're right it was for me i just don't i couldn't i couldn't put my finger on where i, I saw thought that too like and that. now that i'm thinking about it again i still can't i'm like maybe you know? one of our listeners can fill us in on that in the comments Exactly, because but yeah, yeah, yeah was like, that's gonna I'm, bug me. Because I remember somebody having like like it going around somebody. Maybe uh, it's gonna like bug me Tony too. Would have done. But I'm not yeah, sure. maybe it had, that had to be one of Tony's arrows. But I'm trying to figure out like where I saw it though. We'll we'll probably yeah. think of, of it like when we're not trying to think of it. That's usually how probably. it works. Um. <laughs> Let's talk about the Kingpin's entrance in this episode. Man. Because he came in in a big way, like stomping through the scene with his cane and going to meet Eleanor. I was like, oh, talk about making an entrance. Yeah, but he had on a dad shirt. (laughs) You know. He not did. no not not at that point at that point no, he had a black he, shirt on yeah he had no, on just he, a regular black shirt when no, he I think when, he had on the dad I'm shirt. looking oh, at not, him in the oh, background not for now. Eleanor. yeah that's right that's yeah right. no right. when he first yeah. met up with Eleanor yeah, I mean the shirt. way he just and it's like like I said I haven't I, I didn't finish watching Daredevil I only watched <laughs> like the first few episodes of the first season and I remember him having like this presence but in this episode, it's like whenever he was on the screen, and I don't know if they did this on purpose, it's almost like they you had him it. fill the screen. Yeah. I felt claustrophobic watching his scenes in this. It was, it was, it's almost like he was right there in your face. Yeah. And yeah, it's like he went shoulder to shoulder on the screen. Yeah, they either were behind the person up at him mm-hmm. or behind him down. Yes. To make him look really big. Oh, my goodness. I felt it. Because I would, I was watching it, and I, the TV downstairs that I usually watch is like a fifty-five inch screen. So imagine just fifty-five inches of Wilson Fisk, and you're sitting like maybe two, three feet away from the screen. He felt very large, and I was like, "Oh!" And they modulated just, his voice a couple of times. You think if that you, was modulated, or you think that was him just, changing just the, the way his voice? Maybe he did a couple of times, but it, it sounded like something. There were a couple of times, like one time he said Maya, it sounded modulated. I just, I don't know. I took it like he had like this, this kind of growl in his voice. Like he, I don't know, like the, the moments where he's like really upset. And it's, it's so weird because you see that little tick in his face. When mm-hmm. Eleanor yeah. walked out the room and I was like, that's not an easy thing to just replicate. Like when, you know, when you get so angry, your, your, your mm-hmm. skin just starts jumping. And when he sounded angry, his voice did, it sound, sound like it was on a different register. Like it sound, sounded totally different than from, um, let's say the time that he was talking with Maya and, and Kazi and, you know, he was kind of half signing and then half talking and I, I will say this, I feel like if this is uncle, quote unquote, and you have practically raised this girl, there should be no reason why Kazi is over there translating for you. Wilson Fish should know fluent sign language by now. That's just, that's my little small takeaway. But I mean, he knows some sign language. I, don't, I mean, he, yeah, I think, I think he can, I think he understands more than he says. He just wanted, he just wanted Kazi to translate just to make sure that he got it right. Plus, he he needed Kazi there anyway because he needed to handle that situation. So I think that I think he I think he can he can understand her plenty well. It's like Clint. Clint pretended not to really know, but Clint knows. Yeah, I think he knows. But I think Clint knows a little bit. 
No, I think he knows. You think? I think he knows a lot more because when he he was very confident when he was speaking to her. Um, yeah, okay. after he, after he attacked us, Ronan. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so we get to see him and her interact in this show, and it's it's so weird watching that dynamic because even though he's talking to her like she's his family and you know he cares about her. It's almost like he already knew and and he probably did, you know, Kazi, I'm sure came back and told him, hey, she asked me why I wasn't at that meeting. I think she suspects something because when she leaves from this conversation, he turns to Kazi and he's like, our, our Maya has turned on us. And I'm like, how did you get that from that little conversation? But you can kind of tell from her face, she was like over it. She well, was like, yeah, you can, you can assume Kazi's been telling him the whole situation the whole yeah. time. So, low point. And yeah, like you said, I asked you to stay low. You know, you're supposed to lay low, and she's not laying low. Yeah, he, yeah. Right. And then, and the then other... he turns to Kazi, he says, What did he say to him? You know what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Like, really? That's how you treat your the family? Child? Yeah. Right. Is that how you treat family? So, right. Yeah. And, you know, basically, she was like, She said, I realized that, um, I have been, you know, I've kind of been going overboard with this. Finding his killer is not going to bring him back. I need to let this go. That should have told you right there. Okay, she knows it's you, but she's not about to pursue this. She's just like, okay, you know what? Forget this. He could have just let that go because she wasn't going to pursue it. She was like, look, I just need to, I just need a couple of days, clear my head. I'm mm -hmm. coming back. I'll come back. I'll be good. No, I think in his mind, he was like, this this bitch is lying to me <laughs> like i know she's lying to me so what, what is she supposed to do confront him like oh yeah you killed my dad she's not stupid we no, said not. this from the beginning she's not a stupid girl that's why she was trying to get the hell out of dodge right she was like look <laughs> let me just go wrap my brain around this and and kind of you know deal with the fact that my uncle killed my father for whatever reason and you know, Wilson is just, he's like, okay, you know what? The Ronin is running around the city and Avenger has taken an outsized interest in our operations. The Bishop woman, she thinks that she can quit her job like she works for Goldman Sachs. I was like, oh, he's starting to get us. <laughs> I have a question. You know, this mm -hmm. is just, this is just a generalized question. It's sort of off topic. Like, did it sound to you like he was more concerned about Hawkeye than he should have been. Like, hey, there's an Avenger interested in what 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 we have going on here. She, she, is he? Does I mean, he seem bothered by that? Like, I mean, this is one of the same guys that fought against an alien. I I mean, Kingpin. Yeah, and I was thinking about this. I was like, yeah, Kingpin. He's he's badass or whatever, but he ain't no Thanos. Yeah, this is yeah, somebody um, who fought with. He fought against Loki. He fought against the Chitari. He fought against Thanos. Yeah, Hawkeye would be somebody to be I, that I would feel like. Okay, yeah, I need to kind of keep an eye on him. Because yeah, and, like, if Hawkeye, if Hawkeye think, was, he could also. It's somebody who point. says like, Wait, like yeah, oh, y'all were talking. Sorry, ahead. I was just saying like, yeah, if any Avenger was in your business, you need to take note that that you need you need to take notice of that it doesn't matter if it's a high level avenger or if it's a or if it's a quote-unquote low level avenger if there is such a thing it's like you know i mean even any any avenger even if it's even if they don't do anything if they if someone finds out someone gets a hold of it it's like your news is your business is all over the place because they're like hawkeye is taking hawkeye is taking interest in kingpin's kingpin's kingdom and it's like that's you know, it gets all over the news or it gets all over the underground that 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 you know an Avenger is fucking with Kingpin shit. They're like, well, maybe we shouldn't fuck with Kingpin for a minute until he gets that shit taken care of. That's gonna cost him money, that's gonna cost him resources, and that's gonna cost him a lot of things that he can't afford to lose. So he's like, Okay, I need to get this heat off me before it gets out of hand. Once it gets because once it gets out of hand, I'm fucked. So I need to go ahead and get that taken care of any it's like period even if it's like shoot if a teen titan was paying attention you'd have to you'd have to be like okay i gotta handle that but yeah i mean it's, it's bad business 
Well, I think also thinking about what you said um, in earlier episodes, Anthony, about Hawkeye dealing with street level crime, you know, one of the things about them bringing in the Marvel Netflix shows into this universe now we have to start answering the question because I'm like, okay, I even though I didn't finish watching the show, I know Kingpin was a force to be reckoned with in New York. You know, like he says in this episode, he was like, these they need to be reminded that I own this city. Okay, but you have your Avengers and you have your Spider-Man who is technically speaking in the same neighborhood. I mean, mm-hmm. even though, you know, there was a we've already discussed it on one of our other shows but i don't know if i want to spoil it here but there was somebody who showed up from one of the marvel shows in spider-man no way home so it it already paints that picture that they're all in the same neighborhood but of course we've never heard anything about kingpin or 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 daredevil or luke cage in the avengers films because again they were that that street level they were, I yeah. guess, you know, not as important. Like when you have aliens falling out the sky, you have bigger fish to fry than worry about worrying about what your local mob boss is doing. But now that that threat has been eliminated, now the fact that an Avenger is taking interest in your business affairs, that will be cause for concern because it's like, oh, wait a minute. They don't have a global or international or interstellar threat. Aliens to fight. Right. So now they're paying attention to little old me. And even though it is just Hawkeye at this point, think about it. Tony Stark is dead. Natasha is dead. We still, you know, Captain Rogers may or may not be dead. You know, he's either dead or he's on the moon which is what a lot of people theorize but you still have Hawkeye you still have Thor and you still have the Hulk as part of the original Avengers so who's to say hey if Hawkeye is taking the interest in what I'm doing maybe those other Avengers will come and also take an interest like it starts to get on a level where it's like okay I need to figure out what I'm doing like why is an Avenger paying attention to my to what I'm doing? They've never paid attention to me before when they had other shit that they were dealing with. They don't have those threats anymore. So that's just kind of the way I looked at it. But it's going to be interesting to see how they are going to merge those two worlds. You know, if they're bringing in the Marvel Netflix characters into the MCU in, in whatever capacity. You know, like I said, we have them appearing here in the Hawkeye show we have a character who appeared in Spider-Way No Man uh excuse me No Way Home so you've got them in the TV show and the film so that's happening you know what I'm saying it's happening now we just have to see how they're going to merge those two worlds and even though they probably won't but you have to find some kind of way to explain okay so all of this stuff has been going on down here how is it that these people up here the avengers or whatever have never heard of it because even if they didn't pay daredevil i mean excuse me kingpin any mind hearing about another superhero that's like flying and soaring through the streets that should have at least registered that at least that's what i think so I think you're right, and this is not a theory, but you, <laughs> you don't have how... on your no theory shirt today, so it's a theory. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know how Tony found um, Peter, right? In YouTube videos. So I'm sure he has files or information on other people, other potential people like Jessica Jones and mm-hmm. Luke Cage to to become avengers okay or at least look at it so that could be one way of of working them into it like someone finds these files like yeah all these people are dead well not all these people but they're missing some team members Mm -hmm. and they got to fill those ranks again right you know or at least that could be the assumption yeah yeah that that could be something that that's how they could work them in okay but then again, you know, once again, it's street level stuff. That's all Peter was doing when Tony 
recruited him. He's yeah, like doing street level true. stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. pickpockets and purse snatchers. Mm -hmm. you know? That's all he was doing. Yeah, yeah, but really, I mean, when you when you look at it, the whole all of the Marvel shows on Netflix are basically street are basically basically street criminals in one form or another whether they're like high street criminals or low street criminals it's like because kingpin is like a higher level street criminal but it's like you know is but cottonmouth is the wins wasn't as high as he was right so it's like right. you know there, there are levels to that so i mean there's some there's street levels that are like trying to graduate to other levels than some that are not but it's like you know i mean it's like crime is crime when you, yeah, when you don't yeah, have anything yeah. else to do. And spoiler for Luke Cage right now, Luke Cage is, is a crime lord. So I, I saw that the other day. Like I didn't finish, I didn't watch the uh I only watched the first season. So I, I was looking at something else and saw that Luke Cage is king. I said, wait, wait, what I was like, oh God, y'all, I don't have enough time in my day to watch all of this stuff. Like, oh I need to do this full yeah. time. I do. But yeah, no doubt um but yeah so so that's that's going to be interesting how they how they try to work all of that in i think Echo if they're going to work the, the gateway show i think you might be right they can they can pull them all in in her show yeah because at this point we don't know where we don't know where she's going you know at the end of the episode uh <laughs> so of course she has her um she she tells kingpin that she's gonna go away for a few days to clear her head and this is when kingpin tells kazi okay you you kind of need to handle this and as she's packing her clothes she sees a picture of her father and then there's a photo of her her father and kazi all together and she leaves and i was like yeah she's not gonna let that stand she's not there's no way she's gonna be able to just walk away from that and clear her conscience because Kazi is close to her. He's like family to her, or you know, I kind of gather from their their exchange, they might have been closer than that. Like there might have been a romantic interest there or something. So she actually goes to um, Rockefeller Center, which is where all of the fight is uh, happening with the tracksuit mafia, and Kazi is there in one of the buildings, you know, trying to snipe Clint and all this other stuff is going on. So she gets into a confrontation with Kazi. And this is where he tells her, he was like, look, this is my life. You were never supposed to be in this. You were never supposed to get this deep because she's still trying to give him an out, you know? And I think, I feel like she was taking Clint's speech from the last episode into consideration you know, about, hey, sometimes sometimes we're forced to do things or we're manipulated to do things that we really don't want to do, but we're put in positions where that's not really something that we can say no to. And I think she feels like <clears throat> with Kazi, you know, obviously at this point, we know Kazi had something to do with her father's death. And even though that hurts her, I think she's willing to give him a chance if he just leaves. And, you know, she's like, look, I just want to get out. We can do this together. Come with me. We can, we can start over somewhere else. And she's really pleading with him. And I don't think she's insincere about it. I think she really is like, look, we can work through this. I just need you to get out. Let's just get away from here. And Kazi's like, look, this is my life. I, you, you really think he's going to let us go? We can't do this. He he tried to give her an out. Hey, you leave. Go away. Don't ever come back. I can't go. And, you know, she refuses and they end up getting into a fight because, again, Kasi has been ordered. Look, you need to handle this. Coming from the kingpin, that means she needs to die, which, like you said, Anthony, oh, this is how we treat family? Like, you've raised this girl from a little girl or you've been a part of her life since she was a little girl and just because now she's figured out who you are and what you did you're just gonna automatically kill her you're not even gonna give her a chance to say hey okay you know what explain this to me what did my dad do? like he didn't even give her a chance you know she finds out she uh, obviously anytime you find out somebody murdered your father regardless of whether it's somebody you know or not you're gonna need some time to process that information he didn't even give her time to process it. It was just Look, like business, oh, business is business. 
business. Mm. That's the thing. Business is business. He knows that if he lets her go, she's either going to interrupt his business or she's going to try to come back and kill him because she he knows that she knows the truth. So she either has to. So it's like she has to. It's her or him. Mm. Either she dies or he dies. There's no middle ground with that because he killed. He had her father killed, and it's like there's no like there's there's nothing to that even though <clears throat> but i don't know I how, because it's like if you think about it her father could have tried to kill kingpin first and that was a retaliation but she will never know and he will never know because he didn't even give her the opportunity to say hey can you please explain to me what was the thought process be- behind you killing my dad like what was going on did he do something to you did he betray you like I feel like even if that was her father, if her father was actually in the wrong, which he probably wasn't, this is Kingpin we're talking about, but even if her father was in the wrong, I feel like she should have at least had a chance to be told that. Yeah, but she, her but she wasn't trying to hear to be, none of that. Her father didn't want her father didn't want her to be in that life. Yeah. The Kingpin did. Yeah, he took, okay. you saw he tried, he told her to fly away, little dragon, and after when he was dying. But she wasn't trying to hear that because when when she caught up with Kingpin after he got blown up and beat up and stuff, like she wasn't trying to hear none of that. Well, she I saw think him. She got to that was probably that was I think that was probably also an emotional reaction because she ended up having to kill Kazi and she didn't want to do that. And I think she yeah. was probably pissed. Like, okay, it's his fault that I had to do this. Like. I feel like whatever the relationship between her and Kazi, I feel like she loved him enough that she was willing to give him another chance. Like, hey, let's just leave. Let's go somewhere else. Let's get away from him and we can figure this out. And because Kazi chose Kingpin over her for whatever reason, whether he felt like he was obligated or whether he felt like, okay, if I leave with you, he's just going to find us and kill us anyway. Let me at least do this so that I can live that's probably what his mindset was but the fact that she ended up having to kill him yeah i'm i'm sure whatever level of pissivity she was at with kingpin it was magnified by the time she finished with kazi so when she found him at the end there was no negotiating there even when he tried the whole little sweet talk like i love you you're my family she was like she put that gun in his face and she pulled the trigger now yeah but i don't I have a theory. I have a theory. Mm-hmm. I'm, I am, I am not convinced that she killed him. Oh, oh no, she, she didn't kill him. No, they would no. not bring him in for a, a small mention at the end of last episode and this episode just to kill his character yeah, off. She, Do you she know the, the kind of fan outrage that would have? Like you just brought him in to kill. No, she didn't. Well, kill she him. did the same thing in the comic book and it didn't kill him. Okay. Yeah, yeah so, she probably I mean, she probably hurt him. She probably injured him, but dead. No, I don't think this is the last we've seen of him. Yeah, that's a, okay. I'll just make sure that make sure we're on the same page. Oh like, yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, right, only because cool. I know what happens in the comic book. So, and yeah. I don't I mean, know yeah, what happens in the comic books, and but, I was still but, like, but, yeah, there is no way he is dead right now. No, but even even that. if he didn't, you know, you know, he didn't get shot because the scene. Like when they were they they had they were shooting, they had both of them in the scene. Then they panned up when he was still talking, and then you they were panned up, and then you hear the shot. Anytime they do that in the movie, whoever was supposed to get shot doesn't get shot. Um, if it you never listen happens. carefully, there's a thud. Really? Yeah, she probably shot him in the shoulder. No, she shot. Or him she in probably head. shot him in the face, and he no, fell. But I mean, think about it. He got stabbed. He got shot with arrows. He got hit by a freaking car. <laughs> And he got up and walked that shit off. A gunshot, he's probably like, ouch. He 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 may have passed out, but he's gonna wake up and he's gonna be like, Oh, I'm coming for your ass. And that's gonna be the whole echo show. Him him trying to get at her and she trying to stay away. Mm, no, yeah, I don't think he's dead. It's like her her running from the tracksuit mafia. They're them chasing her like putty's chasing the Power Rangers. Then come back. Hey, it's hey, it's Echo Bro, Echo Bro, Echo Bro. <laughs> I, it finally dawned on done, me. It we should have done a me. drinking game for the oh, word bro. Say bro. 
He finally like I said, I got I got to I got I still got to work. Y'all are all y'all ain't working right now, but I still got to work. I'm not trying. I got I still got shit to do. Like I can't yeah, be doing all that. What's the name of the trucking company? Trusted bro. Yes. It finally, it yeah, finally hit me. Bro. Oh, because they say bro all the time. <laughs> what? Got it. To six and episodes. Time. So okay. Cool. It. Thanks for playing. <laughs> and really, <laughs> you were lying. lying. You were lying. I know I'm you not. lying. I'm not. I know. <laughs> I've been thinking, why would they call their fucking moving company a trusted bro? Like, why would they do that? And then when he was, Cause, bro, when the one guy was talking to, bro, Kate, we just, it's the moving bro. When he was thanking her for uh for helping him out with his girlfriend, he said, <laughs> he said, bro. I was like, oh, that's why. He was like, I mean, your to, advice we really helped. We went to go see with Maroon Five instead. <laughs> like, oh my god. That was that was funny. Okay, was it just me, or did Clint really loosen up in this episode? Like he seemed like he was having fun, even though he was fighting for his life. He seemed like he was having a little bit too much fun. Like he was more he was more am- amiable towards Kate. You know, <clears throat> the joking while he was fighting, he was smiling a little bit. I think Clint. I think even though he likes being a retired Avenger, I think Clint misses the action. Oh, this is the thing about- He looked like he was having way too much fun. All right, here's the thing about Clint. It's like, even in the, you can see it, you can tell when Clint's actually enjoying himself, like in the first Avengers, anytime Clint hits a no-look arrow shot, you know he's having fun. Oh, because that, that that's him clowning. And it's like, I mean, you when, especially when, now that he knows that Katie that Kate was in Kate was like fully all in and committed he like he knew that she that she was like ready and focused to do what she needed to do Mm -hmm. he was like okay I can relax a little bit now and have a little bit of fun with this so I'll get all the arrows and you know give her a couple let her shoot all this shit off and you know especially that one scene like towards the end where he's like yeah they were coming he was like "Ah." and And she looked at him like (laughs) really like, you know, the, I, I had you, flashbacks to the speech she gave Wanda uh, about if you walk through that door. I mean, it's yep. okay if you stay here. You can stay here. It's, it's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. But when you walk through that door, you're an you Avenger. Are an Avenger. Mm-hmm. And, and can we just say that he would make, he makes the best like mentor trainer for any, any young superhero because he gives those great speeches and he doesn't he also doesn't sugarcoat his um you know his feelings as far as okay i'm not a role model i'm not a hero or you know he he take he accepts responsibility for what he's done and he tells them okay look when you go out here you may have to do this you may have to do that i mean think about it the whole episode is kate coming to terms with finding out her mother is a liar and a murderer and a whole slew of other things. And he, he also has tells to make her sure. part, part of this is making sacrifices. Right. You're going to have to make sacrifices. Mm-hmm. This comes with a job. Right. And, you know, again, he doesn't shy away from his responsibilities or the things that he's done, but he's still trying to make sure, okay, you know what? I did it this way. And here are the ways that I screwed up. Now, if you're going to do this, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to not end up like me, you know. But I, I also love the, um, the scene where, and again, like I said, she has grown on me over these six episodes. That, I mean, over the, the last five episodes, because first episode, I couldn't stand her. Now, I feel like she understands the effort. She understands the commitment. She understands the sacrifice. She understands everything that she needs to do. And when he was telling her, okay, look, I just want to make sure you're ready. And then instead of saying something like, uh, you know, instead of being jokey, instead of saying something smart ass, like she does sometimes, she gave him her truth. She was like, you know, we were attacked by aliens. I, I was scared. I was alone. And then I saw you fly off a building, even though you didn't have, you know, even though you couldn't fly. 
and all you had was a stick and a, you know, a stick and a string. And that let me know that regular people, you don't have to be a superhero in order to do things. You can be a regular person, still be a superhero. And then you see him listening to that because she's very sincere when she says, and he cracks that little crooked smile. He's like, okay. And I felt like that was kind of that I don't know, for me, that was kind of that passing on the torch thing. That was when he realized she was ready and she was like, okay, you know what? I got this. I can do this. I'm committed. And he was like, okay, let's go. And you see the way they coordinated the rest of the um, episode with their fighting, even when they were separately fighting, just the things that they were doing, you could tell they were both on the same page finally, you know, at least until Clint was in that tree and he told her not to do anything and she shot the tree down anyway. That was funny. <laughs> that was funny because when he was falling, I was like, oh my God, is he going to die? And then when he got caught in that tree and that damn owl was <laughs> looking at him. Oh. Wait, I thought she was going to die. When she, I was like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. And she grabbed this rope and jumped out and she's screaming yeah. all the way down. She went yeah, down that like, wall wait. so fast. I was like, oh my gosh, she is going to break something. And he's just looking at her and then he looks down and he's talking to her through the window. Dude, y'all still got people trying to kill you. Y'all can't have a conversation right now. <laughs> Can we talk about his reflexes though? Like the sniper, when Kazi tried to shoot him, he threw up the plate and blocked the bullet. And then when yeah. Elena was trying to shoot him, he moved his bow to block the bullet. I've I'm always like, oh said God. this about Hawkeye. Hawkeye, this is why I say he is one of my favorite characters and I feel like people sleep on him. This dude yeah. is amazing. His reflexes and the way he can see things out his peripheral and the, the no look shots and all this stuff. Hawkeye is a badass and I feel like people don't give him enough credit. You know, and I mean, I, I know, like Lori said, he's a lot, you know, he he's a bigger badass in the comics and they kind of really, I feel like they didn't do his character justice in the Avenger movies. It's like, if you think about it, when they talk about Hawkeye, he's always at the bottom rung, like even on the uh, memorial plaque for the Avengers that we saw him talking to, his name is at the bottom. And I'm like, do y'all realize how many of Hawkeye's trick shots were necessary in order for them to defeat the Chitari in the first Avengers? Like they couldn't have done this shit without him. Yeah, like the one Loki caught and it was like, nice try, and then it blows up in his face. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But I mean well, what were we talking just... about? Was this on the show? I don't remember if this was a conversation I was having with someone else. Um when he was talking about the the when we see him with the tesseract when that, fury was talking that was that, that was yeah. that was me like, we we talked about the last episode where he was talking so, about well nothing happened nothing's happening on this end and nick fury's like what do you mean this end?" he was like the tesseract is a door to the uh to the universe right <laughs> doors open on <laughs> both sides oh, like <laughs> yeah again people sleep on him and i'm so glad like this episode was so much fun because you got to see all different sides of him. You got to see the vulnerable side. You got to see the the very um, stoic and focused side when he was fighting with them. When he the was fighting with, veteran. <laughs> yeah, when when he was fighting with Kazi, you could tell he was holding back because I was, was like, was why are you letting him hit you like that? But he said he didn't want anybody else to die. Yeah. So he was holding back his punches. I was like, no, because you're letting Kazi whoop your ass. And, and then he started fighting back. And I was like, okay, this, this is what I need. But you get to see all different sides of him in this episode. Even um, at the end, you know, when everything is said and done, he finally gets to go home on Christmas Day. He takes Kate and he takes Lucky, the dog, who finally has his, his correct name. He takes them with him and you get to see him with the kids and you get to see him with Laura and he's happy he's you know so you get so different but you yeah. get to see all sides of him in this episode and it's one of the reasons why i like this episode so much is like you get to see all sides of all of them i mean even eleanor bishop you know we've seen her throughout this uh series as kind of cold a little calculating a little all business like or a little nonchalant sometimes and you know just 
the way that she's done things in the last couple of episodes I was like yeah this bitch is evil like she just she just framed her fiance without a second thought and all this other stuff but then you also get to see her vulnerable side in this episode like she went to the kingpin and said my daughter is too close to finding out the truth yo deuces I'm out and he was like you can't do that she was like this is not a request she basically put her foot down she was like look I I'm not doing this I'm not doing this with you anymore it kind of reminded me of um you know what it reminded me of the scene in the daredevil movie when Electra's father basically told the kingpin that he was done working for him it was it was similar to that like look yeah I'm, I'm not doing this anymore she was like my daughter is too close to finding out that is something I will never let happen no I will not sacrifice my daughter I will not I will not bring her into this absolutely not and she held on to that toward until the end even when he threatened her he you know he tried to he, he was about to get her Kate got to him first and then she turned around and she hit him with a car I was like, oh, okay. Like she was serious. I'm, I'm not intimidated by you. That takes a lot of strength, you know, to, to stand up to someone who has held such a grip on your life for so long to say, you know what? I'm done. I'm out. I know you'll probably kill me. I know you'll probably do this, but she, she held fast to it. Now she got to go to jail for a little bit now, but you know, yeah, I got to give her props for that because I'm sure Kingpin had that look was like, she, like, she can't do that. I'm Kingpin. Why is she talking to me like that? And it's like, because I'm pretty sure nobody has ever talked to Kingpin like that. Just said, okay, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to leave and you're going to leave me alone. He's like, wait, just because it's the, because it's the holidays, I'm going to give you a chance to think about this. She's like, all right, thought about it. I'm out. And he's just sitting there with the eye twitch and it's like, and I'm like, damn, where's this painting? He needs this painting. Can somebody get the white painting, please? I thought he was about to kill her, though. When he when he reached into the car, he was like, come here, let me talk to you for a minute. I was like, oh, she about to no, die. She, was dead. he's giving her she about another, to die. He's going to give her another chance. He doesn't do that. He was going to be like, look, I need you to reconsider. Because no, no one to... says that to him one time and live to tell about it. Right. right. Nobody. <laughs> yeah, he's so about, he was about I, to I, handle I, that. Yeah, I couldn't believe he was going to actually give her another. Let's talk about it. I was <laughs> like, oh, really? I, I was like, there, there's not, there's not about to be any talk. Cause she about to die. She about but to die. He didn't she kill her. He just, he just said, "Oh, let's talk." He no, didn't he have a chance to do shit. anything because Kate came after him, and then she hit, then Eleanor hit him with the car. But yeah. you know, okay, um, hold up, I got a problem. I knew this was coming. I don't too, but I, I'm gonna tell you my problem real quick because it's playing in the background. Why is he wearing Lilo's dress as a shirt? <laughs> this is what I was saying. He's wearing the dad shirt now. Why He's is he wearing, wearing Lilo from well, because, because shirt. That's that's because where, wherever he was, he was in like a luau themed room when he met with Eleanor. So there was obviously some kind of party he was going to or something that was luau themed. That's not the problem I have. The problem I have is that. Eleanor's car was facing one way. Then Kingpin guys was going to take her out of the car. He he gets distracted by Kate. Like he doesn't go that far towards Kate. And next thing you know, Eleanor hits him with the car. Now, New York streets, I'm I'm familiar with how narrow New York streets are. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with how people park in New York. How the hell? Did she not make, did she get the car perpendicular enough to hit him? Because she didn't hit him at an angle. Like, he's right here. She didn't no. hit him at an angle. She hit him straight on. So she had to make a three or four point turn in order to, she pretty much had, she had to damn near Austin Powers that bitch to make, to get it to where it was, to get, to get it to the perpendicular enough to hit him the way she hit him. And I was like, wait a minute, How? You didn't, didn't hear, you didn't hear like tire squealing or anything until she hit him. That's because like, we were too busy hearing uh, Kingpin hitting Kate. <laughs> I think, I think he was hitting her at that point. She, let me tell you, that girl, she took some, she took some hits. I don't know what they put in the, in that suit, that purple and black suit. 
they had to have done right. something similar to what Shuri did to the Black Panther suit. Because when I tell you, she was taking some hits and she is not a small girl. I mean, she, well, she's not a big girl. She should have been bruised <laughs> or damaged a little bit more because he was throwing her around like she was a sack of whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's going to feel it tomorrow. That, that yeah. adrenaline is a motherfucker. She's going to feel yep. it tomorrow. Go, go, go ahead and get some of them daquiries and get, get them daquiries ready to put on you. <laughs> I guess I guess Laura and the kids will take care of her on the farm because we were talking uh, about it earlier. He could have, if he wanted to, he could have done some serious damage to her. But she wasn't. She was just kind of in the way. Yeah, and that's why at the end he was like, "You're starting to annoy me." That's mm-hmm. when you should probably get worried <laughs> at that point. Because up until that point, he was like, "I just want to kill this other chick." You're just kind of in the way. Get out of my way. Get out of my right. way. Yeah, he was like, "I just yeah. want to talk to your mama. I just That's want to all. talk. I just want to holler at it for a second. Mm. Come here, let, let me holler at you. Holler, 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 Yeah, I just, yeah, he, he was. I mean, he definitely could have like cr- just crushed her. He was, he really, it was kind of like a big brother, little sister thing. He was like, go, go, go. And then he turned around. I, I'm starting to get annoyed now. <laughs> like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, shout shout out to her for nicking for stealing one of his getting one of his um cufflinks off without him knowing it. And then mm-hmm. doing the snap thing and getting and and igniting all her arrowheads. That was that, that was, was cool. pretty dope. That was pretty cool. But um because then she had to identify which arrowhead to hit. In order to cause a chain reaction, that's, mm-hmm. that's pretty pretty quick thinking. Yeah, yeah. But this um this, this episode was great. I'm I'm looking in the background at Yelena and and Kate now, and that their little fight scene and their little back and forth. I I really hope that um we do see them again soon. But you know. We don't really have any new Marvel content coming out for a couple of months now. Like, what, I what's next? I think Doctor Strange. And that's coming out in May. We when got is a She-Hulk? Long... She-Hulk is not, I think, until later on this uh, next year. Miss Marvel? Not until later on next year. I think Doctor Strange is the first thing that's coming out. You know what oh, really shit. annoyed me was we were having that discussion where we're like, okay, so Doctor Strange and then Ant-Man is 2023? Yeah. <laughs> they killed me. I know. Yeah, this is less than a long time. I know. Um, I'm, like, I'm like, y'all can't do this to us. Y'all gave us... We had new content like every month or every other month this year, and now y'all finna make us wait. It's not fair. The only good thing is Doctor Strange is coming out my birthday weekend, so <laughs> that's about the only good thing. But we have to wait for so long. I think Moon Knight might be coming out before because they're saying they're saying Miss Marvel's coming out next summer. So unless there's something in the winter, like coming up in the next month or two. Or in the spring sometime, then it's probably gonna be it could be either Moon Knight or She Hulk coming in the spring. But the Miss Marvel will be in the summer, and that might be the next thing until Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. It's gonna be a minute. Uh let's see. What else do we need to talk about with this episode? Oh, uh, they could have been filming Echo all this time. Uh, well. Yeah, it could have been. Um, Yelena and Kate complimenting each other on their fighting styles and <laughs> body form and all this other stuff. <laughs> they are awesome. I, 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 I seriously need them in a buddy movie, like for real, like immediately. Like that needs to happen because they are awesome together. Mm-hmm. Um, also, a shout out to the idea of Jacques being in um in the new york larpers that's gonna be awesome i bet you that is this some sort of leisure (laughs) i bet you that irritated Lori to no end (laughs) but it was funny 
Yeah. And I got to, I mean, even though we only got a short, little short version of him with his sword skills, I was like, okay. I actually had to look and be like, wait, the, the, like, don't tell me that some, that some of the tracksuit mafia actually brought swords. I was like, okay, those are baseball bats. Okay. All right. Okay. We're good. Just keep going. Cause I was like, wait, those sound, those sound like sword sounds. And I was like, wait, is Ozzy making sword sounds again? Like mm-hmm. he was when they were fighting, like, ching, right. ching. Um. Oh, shout! We got we got to give Lori her Lori her props. Um, shout out to Lori because she did say that the Rolex could be Kate's, and the Rolex was in fact Kate's. No, it you mean Laura's? Laura's. Laura's. I'm sorry, Laura's. Yes, the Rolex was Laura's. She was an agent of Shield. Yep. I and she was her. agent number she was agent number nineteen, which was as I surmised, uh, Mockingbird. And Mockingbird is definitely have is the way they're doing is definitely as a as a um, hand, as a handed down is a handed down code name apparently. So that's going to be cool as shit. Like I want to see I want to see a backstory. Now I want that I want to see the backstory. With I need her. them to that do a second season of this show. Hawkeye is a handed down. Oh, I'm sorry. Hawkeye is a handed down code name. Now it is. Yeah. Yep. I like the way they did that at the end too, because she's throwing out all these names, and he was like, "Oh, I have an idea." And then they end the show. And then, ding. I'm like, okay, that's cute. I I really hope that they give us a second season. Um, because other than that, I don't know. I don't know that we'll see Clint in anything else. But I feel like, especially with them introducing the the Laura stuff in this uh in this season, they have to give us more. You right. can't just dump that on us yeah. and not give us more. At the very end, they're like, oh, by the way, she was an agent of shield. Okay, bye. Like, right. whoa, 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 whoa. Right. <laughs> now, was it just <laughs> me or did I did it look like when they were at the farm towards the end, um, right before um Clint w- took Kate outside to burn the Ronin suit? Did it seem to me like Lila was maybe a little bit I don't know, upset. I was like, because if you think about it at the beginning of uh, Endgame, when we saw his family get blipped, he was teaching her archery and he called her Hawkeye. So I was like, is she going to get mad because now the the moniker is being passed down to Kate instead of her? Like, I I don't know. Maybe she would be relieved. Maybe I was, (laughs) well, I know she'd be like, "Thank God be, I ain't got to do this shit. I'm gonna go to college, go to college, become a become a teacher and shit. Yeah. Fuck this. Shooting arrows is fun and shit, but these motherfuckers barely home. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm saying. And he come, he's he's always home all scarred up and shit. Yeah, right. he probably he probably saw all them scar scars on Kate and sees sees how she's all sore and shit, like from getting her ass beat by Kingpin. She's like, you know what? Um, I could be a lawyer. Yeah, law school sounds really nice right now. <laughs> I mean, wow. it's like nobody. You, know, you got to be called to that shit. You can't just you can't just want to be. And that's what she see. That's what she learned. That's why you finally grew to like her because mm-hmm. she learned instead of just wanting to do it, like she she just felt like you know I just want to do it. But then towards the end, she actually needed to do it because she felt she felt like she was the one to be. She she felt like she needed to be that person instead of just wanting to be Hawkeye. She needed to be it. So. Right. So shout shout out to her for making that making that stretch. Because what did she say? She said, "This is my mess. You can go home to your family for mm-hmm. Christmas." And he's like, "You're my partner. Right. Your mess Aww. is my mess." Now, did he really believe that, or he just knew what he needed to say? No, I think I think at that I point he, he probably did he believe, believe it. it. Yeah, I think he probably did believe it at that point. But he knew she needed to hear it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that 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 was that little extra little bit of motivation say okay you know what you are not alone i got you i got your back and i mean it worked out it worked out great so like i said i i like the way that they 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 finally started working as a team and you could see it like in the way their attacks were coordinated the way that they were moving it was it it was um i think they did pretty good showing the bond between these characters with the limited time that they had you know i i don't know what it is about disney plus and only giving us six episodes of shit but i need y'all can can we can we get 10 episodes i mean just 10 it's 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 cool 
I know you got the money for the budget. So give us 10. Give us eight even. So we need to pump that shit up. Yeah. But, but. um, let's see what else. Oh, the, the little uh, dialogue with Clint and Laura. <laughs> You'll never guess what was found at a black market auction in New York. <laughs> you knew you need to do better. What did he say? You need to uh, take better care of your things. And she was like, you're one to talk. Then he have a whole, <laughs> a whole slew of trick arrows in the evidence lock up in New York. <laughs> <laughs> so, right the ronin suit the sword right like stuff. your shit all over the place but exactly i i actually did i enjoyed this episode i enjoyed this series um you know i i have seen some complaints online about the the series you know oh it's not as good or you know i, I saw somebody who said don't even bother watching the, the finale it sucks i was like excuse you it is oh i enjoyed it you know and he was like well i just i just felt like there were a couple of things they could have done better but overall i did like the series this don't say shit like don't watch the finale because it sucks don't say that it was pretty it was pretty good i enjoyed it there's one thing i heard that i was kind of i i, I saw the point but i didn't necessarily agree with they said that they um the way they handled Kingpin was like they they MCU'd Kingpin as far as like how he was acting. Like they didn't like he he would seem to be acting in a different manner. Like he was I'm trying I'm trying to see how can I describe he, it. He, it's he like, was a, a little bit out of character for what people are used to seeing him as. Yeah, he wasn't right. the same as he was in Daredevil. He was, well, he was a little different. Might be a different version of him. Man, He's a variant. Every t- every time we see every time we see someone someone acting different, we'll be like variant confirmed. Okay, I'm gonna be like that. I mean, well, this I think this is like the first time we we see him. This be straight up kingpin, like doing business. Okay, you know what I mean. Not trying to balance between one one personality or you know or one life and another yeah, life. not trying to walk both like not trying to do both worlds he right was, right he was in he was in business mode mm-hmm. and so that that's something that people just need to wrap their head around he's mm-hmm. he's not he's not trying to have a regular life right I've got Rogers the musical playing in the background. No, it's not. Going. No, no, no. <laughs> you can do this all. Let's just go ahead and wrap it up. Let's wrap it up before he starts. <laughs> I'm not gonna start singing. I didn't watch it that much and enough to do like what Mike just did. Like, but <sighs> I just all I do is do, I can do this all day part. I can't, I, I can't sing that high. I can I, do this all day. I cannot. I wondered. I wondered. Shout out to uh, them for finding. Three, four, five tenors that can hit those high notes. <laughs> yeah, finding finding thing? three lead tenors that 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 sang in unison that that hit that note in unison. Like, damn. Okay. Well, even the guy who did the Hulk had to go up there. Had to climb up there. <gasps> Smart. Right. 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 But no, the guy when he um when he opened up the shirt and had the I love New York and they was doing the little pump like this, I was like, uh-uh, y'all are taking it too far. And the second time I watched it, I realized they, the people next to them had their arms in heart shape. <laughs> oh, you just now see that. <laughs> yeah. And then the guy who was in, was he in the audience or was he directing the uh, directing the orchestra, but the guy who that was, was the sitting director. there? Just, okay. I mean, that was the, the director. Because he was he was way into it, like way into it. It was, it was fun. I wouldn't listen to it like on a loop or anything, but I wouldn't was, listen to it. It was good, actually. Probably <laughs> <laughs> would for shits and giggles. Herman like if I'm to the sky. One day. Yeah, Captain America, cool. strong authorities again. Oh, Both okay. easy on the eyes. No, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> He was like really getting into it too. So that was awesome. So as of right now, we don't have any new MCU content coming up. 
next couple of weeks or months because uh, No Way Home is already released. We've seen that. We've reviewed that. You can check out our episode on that. Um, so I guess Doctor Strange really is the next thing that's coming up. And, you know, we talked about the trailer for that also in our uh, Spider-Man No Way Home coverage. Um, I, th- I think that's it for now, right? Um, Any final I- thoughts on Hawkeye? God, it's like it's like I feel like I need we need to talk more about Yelena and and Kate, but it's like, but we already talked about them. But I just love their I love their freaking chemistry. I'm watching it's like I'm watching a scene where where they're in the in the elevator and, and Yelena's like cap cap. I mean, it's like and the and the part where she grabs her dress and she spins out of it and she's like, did you mean to do that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> And then she takes off her own coat and reveals her own little outfit and before she runs out the elevator. I was like, yeah, yeah I need to see I need to see the two of them in more things yeah. together. Um Yeah, she was like, can, can we get can we get drinks? Sure, we can get drinks after I kill Clint. It's like, no. I like, know that's not what I meant. <laughs> but um my my final thought is once again, Marvel shows they are really good at this because in the beginning. I wasn't too into the show. Like mm-hmm. it had some cool things, but it was like two things. It was either a snowball going down the hill and it just got really big at the end. Mm-hmm. Or musically, since there was a musical at the end, it was like a crescendo. You know, it started out, you know, Pinissimo and just went all the way up to, you know, Double forte, mezzo forte, all that good stuff. Okay, it was pretty good. Yeah. I, I I think they they re- did a really good job at building up the action and building up the story mm-hmm. to to the end to for a big payoff. Yeah, um, I think I mixed a couple of metaphors in there, but it was pretty good. I we, we oh. know what you were talking about. Oh, shout out to the shout out to the other Pim Arrow that they shot when the truck was coming at them and he shrunk them and they're like. Ah! <laughs> the cape was like, "What's gonna happen to them?" And he's like, "I don't know." And then, the, then, and then the owl that came down, he said, "My owl came down and swooped them up." <laughs> so they're just dead. You know that, right? That owl I had mean, a very nice, hearty uh, dinner that night. Exactly. Because one, how would you even find them at this point? There's no telling where that owl took them to. Two, even if they got away from the owl and was able to like try to get to somebody else who's going to see them who's going to find them they're going to get stepped on before yeah they're done they're done that owl had a very nice dinner that night yep i'm gonna have to ask scott (laughs) yeah yeah and shout shout out to the to the the wealth of arrows that the 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 um wide array of arrows they had. I mean, the magnetic arrow that he shot and just made a magnetic ring around the skating rink was mm-hmm. freaking awesome. The airbag one was <laughs> that shit was funny as I'll get out. Tell y'all, it's like I'm, I'm sure mist. Lori would say that those were a shout out to arrows from the comic books. Only one missing. Was I think the they boxing are the, the, the arrow. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see a boxing glove arrow so bad. Yeah, like even if it was like a balloon episodes, arrow though. that looked like. Even if it was a balloon arrow that blew up and looked like a boxing glove, that would have been awesome. And then knock somebody out. And then shot they had the, the arrow that was like a dart was like a sleeping dart that fires sleeping darts out around it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling that you, one. Clint, Clint is a badass. That's some creative shit. I'm like, damn, dude. He's a badass. Then it's like the I, I'm glad he he kind of got his due in this series um i really hope this is not the last time we see him though i really hope it's not that was suck but oh, i guess that's it for our marvel content for 2021 that sounds so <sighs> weird to say we have nothing else coming i know up. like okay so i guess you know we'll see what else is coming up and we will continue our marvel coverage for 2022 we, have we can cover the Doctor Strange trailer. We can do that separately, but we did that with uh, No Way Home. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, but they released that, a trailer. Did you see that? They released it. Uh huh. Yep. So yeah, that means people don't have to sit 
all the way to the end anymore right right so but they they, they're also starting to post uh some of the spoilers from no way home as well so you know oh no more marvel content for a couple of months you sound well, like them hurry up and put move. I know, I know. It's just that's it's so weird to say that <laughs> it's just it's just weird. But that's okay. We have other stuff that we have to cover. I think we're gonna we're gonna do season two of The Witcher. We're gonna start with Wheel of Time. Um, a Discovery of Witches, the final season comes out two weeks from now. So you know, we'll be covering that. Um, the Matrix the Resurrections. Matrix Resurrections came out uh, today, as a matter of fact. So we'll we'll be co- we'll have other stuff to cover. It's not Marvel stuff, but you know, when when they do start back up with the Marvel stuff, we will you know we will start talking about it and uh, keep keep you covered. But for right now, that's it for our show. You can find us online at www.phantomhybrid.com. We are on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Phantom Hybrid. We have a YouTube t- channel at the Phantom Hybrid Podcast, and you can also listen to us on all major podcast streaming platforms. Thanks for listening. We hope you join the conversation next time. <laughs>